What's up guys, Paul Wolf here, out here at the Wolf Racing Shop. Uh, got the 44 car in here. Just finished up Nationals out at Lake Havasu, Arizona. Awesome little track they put, I think it's called the Standard Wars is the area we were in. Um, they put together a great race for us. Um, it was about a 40 mile loop. We ended up doing four loops, four laps or loops. Uh, and uh, so pretty long race. Um, you know, I think it ended up being about an hour a lap is roughly what everybody was running. Uh, we had a, some definitely interesting racing and interesting tests of our team's ability to adapt and overcome. Uh, I'll get right on into it. So it started out, we come out to qualify. First off, well actually we'll go back a little farther than that. We are pre-running and they had a really awesome ridge section, really uh, big uh, whoops in it or moguls in it, whatever you want to call them. Um, we come blasting through it at high speed and again, we're just pre-running. So I'm, I'm in control of the car, not really trying to push the car past its capability. Um, and they had some flags set up and you make a right hand downhill off camber turn and come into it, went to take it. And the guy before me took the berm and they pushed the berm over the edge. And so the, rather than the ruts carried you around the turn, they carried you actually right off the edge of the turn. Um, and I was coming through it and I put the car at the top of the berm and got into the ruts and was like, okay, we're good. Picked the throttle up pretty hard to drive around it. And the, I realized that the ruts went right off the edge of the drop off or a little drop or whatever. And uh, the back of the car stepped out over it. And at that point in time, I pretty much lost the back of the car all the way around was able to save it and get the car to drive out of it, but it, it came back so hard that the car did a complete flip in the air and went all the way back around to its tires and then laid on its side. So I rolled the car again. Um, luckily, I rolled it so fast that we actually didn't get, I'll put this down. We didn't get any of the roof panels. We, we didn't touch the roof at all. So that was a new trick. Um, didn't touch the lights or nothing. Actually got a full rotation. Um, almost made it back to his tires and drove away. It's really close to driving out of it. Um, I'm sure Dylan has footage. He'll put this in this little segue here. But all right, we get through that. We'll go right into qualifying. Went out and qualified. Um, we left the qualifying line. The way qualifying works is there's a guy coming back on his run as we're going out on our run. And uh, so they wait to a certain point in the track. Once the guy gets there, they send me so the guy got to that point, they sent me, I took off, was laying down an awesome, awesome time in the first qualifying run, was super happy with it. Car was working great, everything was working awesome. I was coming back across the ridge before the last turn to the finish line. And uh, the ridge is really violent on the cars and in qualifying, we're always pushing the car to the absolute maximum, as far and as hard as we can push it. And I felt the front uh, diff let go in the car coming across the ridge. Um, I didn't know, I was unaware exactly what happened, but I knew something was not right in the front of the car. Um, made the last turn to come to the finish line and the guy before me rolled over and uh, he was sitting in between me and the finish line. So I couldn't finish that run, that qualifying run. So they waved me off. I had to stop my qualifying run. Um, I already hurt the diff in the car. So I pulled over to the side and when that happens, you get the option to immediately rerun. Um, I actually took a second and I was trying to think if there's any way I could repair the car in the short amount of time that I had and get to run my qualifying run with a fully capable car. Um, being that I knew I hurt the front diff in it. Uh, so we went to the back of the line, the line back up to qualify. There was nothing we could do in the amount of time we had. So I had to just qualify the car in two wheel drive. Um, we had intermittently three wheel drive in the car. So intermittently the front right would pull. Um, we took off the line, the front light would pull a little bit, then it would quit and back and forth. Um, the front left never pulled in the car at all. It never worked from the very beginning. So I ran two to three wheel drive the whole time, able to qualify really well, um, considering that uh, much lower than our first run, but uh, still qualified us, I think in third. So the only pull position we missed all year, um, was a little bummed about that. Uh, I really think our first run, um, I'm really confident we would have had it with that run. Uh, the car was just so much faster when you have four tires pulled. Uh, moving right on into the race. So we start the race, third position, take off. Car's working great, everything's working good. We uh, ended up passing uh, the two guys in front of us. 
um, got around both of them. Um, I believe one of them hit something. I don't know if the other guy hit something or had a mechanical failure, I don't really know. But we got the clean air, so we're running out front by ourselves, leading the race, and uh, we end up having a crank sensor go out. Um, and what that does, for people that don't know at home, is that tells the car when to fire the cylinders. So basically, um, when the crank sensor went out, the car didn't know when to fire, so it defaults back to like an idle state, where um, at an idle, it automatically fires like a startup. So it automatically fires in a certain order, um, no matter what, and so I could idle the car. I couldn't drive the car because it wouldn't breathe to pick up RPM, so I could idle it. I idled it about 13 miles back to pit, um, which in turn fouled a bunch of spark plugs, caused a bunch of other issues for us, um, but we didn't really have a choice. I didn't have a crank sensor with, with me. Um, so we got it back to pit, changed the crank sensor out on the car, which you gotta pull the starter off the car, um, and it's hot. Everything in the car is 200 degrees at this point in time. So we pull, pull the starter off, pull the crank sensor out. I believe Eric Miller did it. Uh, I stayed in the car the whole time, so awesome having him help us. Really appreciate all the pit guys. We had a lot of pit help. Put the crank sensor in the car, put the starter back on the car, got the car backfired up running. The car ran really good, but we fouled out a bunch of spark plugs. So idling back, we fouled the spark plugs out. So the car had miss, it would miss really bad in the low end and mid range um, and pretty much run on about five cylinders, but at least it would run. So I took back off, um, kept running and we were still on the lead lap at this time. But I think from it, it backfiring and, and all the issues we were having trying to get it back to pit, I believe we hurt um, the serpentine belt in the car. Probably with it backfiring and dying and, and everything going on was probably jerking on the belt a lot and was causing issues with it. Or a rock got into the belt. I'm not really for sure which happened, uh, but we ended up losing the serpentine belt on lap two. So I got back out of the car, changed the serpentine belt on the car, and uh, when I was changing it, the leader went by. So I went down the lap, um, got the belt back on the car, took off, and uh, we were actually turning really good lap times. Um, even with changing the serpentine belt, we were only four minutes off of the fastest lap of the day. So we were turning really good lap times, just had a lot of things not go our way. Uh, went out on the third lap and just ran the car conservatively. Um, my goal was to finish. I knew if I got finish points, I had a really good chance at the championship. And we ended up finishing 19th overall. And uh, we lost the championship by 17 points. So if we would have finished 17th, we would have won the championship. Um, so we were real close to it. Just a lot of unfortunate things just took us out of uh, the championship uh, first place. We still end up second. Super happy, a huge feat. Um, you know, you're talking, 100 and something cars start the season to come out second. I'm really happy. Um, we won the East, we won the West, ended up second in Nationals. So really, really good race year. Can't complain at all. Um, you know, a crank sensor is one of them things. We'll carry an extra one. I talked to a lot of veterans in the sport. They carry them. And uh, one of them even told me, he goes, I've been carrying one for seven years now. Never have used it. He goes, uh, I, use, I have one go out on me once, put it in the car, and I've had it in the car for seven years, never put it in. So it's kind of one of them items that just, I, I don't know, you change them out every year, do you not? Uh, I've gotten dis different answers from everybody, but hey, it is what it is, that's why it's racing. Um, everything else in the car held up great, really happy. Rad flow shocks worked awesome. The uh, Nitto tires, race line wheels, RCV, Warren winch, Project X lights, rugged radios, um, everybody, Brannick Motorsports hubs and all the parts they help us with work great. Um, Steve Morgan with the motor, obviously an idle back missing and fouling plugs and it's still running great and uh, come back. So he builds a tough motor. We have used it really hard this weekend. I'm really happy with how it held up. The tube works differentials um, held up great. We beat on them really hard. Um, even though we did have some issues with the front, that one's been in the car for several races. So not really, uh, surprised it probably just timed out to be honest um everything else in the car worked really well really happy and really appreciate all the, everybody that partnered with us this year and allowed us to get to this point so thank you to all the companies i appreciate it